السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل كما قال الله سبحانه وتعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا My brothers and sisters Today inshallah تعالى We will continue to learn about the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but we will also tie it in with the beginning of Dhul Hijjah as we know the importance of preparing ourselves for those 10 days 10 days at the beginning of the next month which is to begin within a few days insha'Allah ta'ala that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam encouraged us to take advantage of before that we learn of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Al-Kafil. Al-Kafil. If you ever lived in the Middle East, if you ever lived as a foreigner in particular, in, for example, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, you are probably familiar with this term, Kafil. Someone who is your guarantor, someone who is a witness, someone who is responsible over you in pretty much everything. That is a kafil for a resident living in a country that is technically not their country of resident or their country of, of citizenship. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as al-kafil, He is responsible over us. And He's the one who takes ultimate responsibility over all of His creation whether it is the human beings, whether it is the plants that need rain and water to drink, 
whether it is the seed that needs to be split open to sprout and to grow, Al-Kafil takes full responsibility over all of his creation. Al-Kafil takes care of all of his affairs. He looks after everything and takes care of everything. And Al-Kafil fulfills his oaths as well. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises something to us, He fulfills it. When He says something will be, it is. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something will come, it will come. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises His mercy, it is promised. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises His punishment upon those who disobey, those who disregard the command of Allah, it's promised and it is fulfilled. So Al-Kafil fulfills his oaths. And Al-Kafil is a witness over all of the oaths that anybody takes. So when we make a promise, when we say we are going to do something, when we testify our belief in Allah, when we submit to Allah in all that He has put forth before us, Al-Kafil has told us what to do, prepared it in the best way, laid it out in front of us, looks after it, takes care of it, and promises what's good for us if we do good, promises what's bad for us if we do bad, and then makes sure that we fulfill. And if we fulfill, Alhamdulillah. But if we say that we're going to do something, and we don't, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has witness over all of the oaths, all of the promises, that we make, that we say that we will fulfill, but don't. And then that gives Al-Kafil the ability to take action against the oath that we failed to fulfill. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Nahl, with regards to taking oaths, He says, وَلَا تَنْقَضُ الْأَيْمَانَ بَعْدَ تَوْكِيدِهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not break an oath after you have already made it. So if you say that you're going to do something, you promise that you will do something, fulfill it. Once you have stated that you will do it, make sure that you do it, don't break it. He continues to say, And when you've taken that oath, remember that you took Allah as your kafir. Remember that you took Allah as your witness, that you told so-and-so person you will do this. You promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you can afford hajj, you will go. You promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our belief that when I'm mature and it's time for me to pray, I will pray. You promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the month of Ramadan comes around, you will fast. And remember Allah says, don't break the promise once you've made it. And he says, and remember that you took as a witness Allah. You took as your kafil Allah. Inna Allah ya'lamu ma taf'aloon. Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what you do. So Allah azza wa jal is reminding us, He is al kafil He knows, He promised, He will fulfill we also have a responsibility towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He's witness over everything that we do. He's witness over everything that we say. He's witness over every action that we fulfill or don't fulfill. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon us for those that have failed or those of us who have not fulfilled our promise. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen us and to grant us the ability to fulfill what we stated, what we, what we truly submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as part of our belief in particular, that we will fulfill that. Ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa ghafurullah. الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين وأصلي وأسلم على نبيه الكريم عليه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم أما بعد. My brothers and sisters, 
through the Prophet Sallallahu Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala promises many things to us. So, one example is the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he says, مَا مِنْ أَيَّامٍ الْعَمَلُ الصَّالِحُ فِيهَا أَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ There is no day that is more beloved for us to do actions to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. As in, it is most beloved to Allah for us to do good deeds throughout these days. And, Allah, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, مِنْ هَذِهِ الْأَيَّامِ Then during these days, and those days he is referring to the first 10 days of the Hijjah. مَا مِنْ أَيَّامٍ الْعَمَلُ الصَّالِحُ فِيهَا أَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْأَيَّامِ So the Prophet ﷺ is telling us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves when we do good deeds more than any other day throughout the whole year, these 10 days. And you'll see that within the 10 days of the Hijjah, what is an important day that we find? The day of Arafah. And then we think to ourselves, wait a second, Arafah reminds me of those who are going for Hajj. And so we start to think to ourselves as believers, well, if I'm not going for Hajj this year, if I'm not able to go and fulfill the Hajj, or maybe I've already gone and performed my Hajj, I also want to benefit from these days. I also want to maximize and to earn rewards from Allah. If the Prophet ﷺ promised us by telling us that there is no days throughout the year that are more beloved to Allah for us to do actions, not nights, not talking about nighttime, because some of you might say, what about Laylatul Qadr? That's the night. We're talking about the day. These days are days that are upon us in a few days. The first being next Thursday, insha'Allah ta'ala. So next Thursday will be the beginning of Dhul Hijjah. And this is why I chose today to open this door of discussion, to start talking about these 10 days so that we can plan and prepare. One of the things that we need to plan and prepare for is how many good deeds we're going to do and what those good deeds are. So we might think to ourselves during the day, I can fast. We don't fast at night. So that's an action of the day. During the day, I might give sadaqah. During the day, I might be as honest as I can be. During the day, I might fulfill what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has requested of me. During the day, I might recite more Quran. During the day, I might be, you know, looking after my family as best as I can. During the day, I might do this and that and whatever good deeds that we can think of. And so it's important for us to begin now and plan. And one of the best things that we can plan for throughout those days is to prepare for Udhiyah. Prepare for the Qurbani, the sacrifice, the animal that is offered as a sacrifice and something that we do fulfilling the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's upon us. And this is a sunnah mu'akkada of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we'll learn more about next week and the week after insha'Allah ta'ala as well because we have two more Jum'ahs before Eid insha'Allah ta'ala. But we'll learn more about the day of Arafah next week so that we can make sure that we're fasting. And that day of Arafah will most likely fall on Friday, two Fridays from today. And so that's important for us to learn about as well. And in addition to that, we also see that these days are days when people go for Hajj. And they fulfill so many rites. They fulfill so many good deeds and actions. And we wish to have the same rewards. But we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put certain rewards for certain people in certain places at certain times. So you can't expect the rewards of Laylatul Qadr in the middle of Muharram. You can't expect the rewards of the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah during Safar. You can't expect the rewards of going for Hajj while being in Milton. But we can expect rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while being in Milton as a means of hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us this ability. That you may not have been able to afford going for Hajj ever throughout your life. But that does not mean that you can't attain forgiveness. That does not mean that you can't come closer to Allah. And so my brothers and sisters, remember the importance of the Udhiyah, the Qurbani, the sacrifice. If a person plans to sacrifice an animal, 
then they should plan to do it before the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. As in, we should have our intentions and prepare that animal, have the animal ready, or at least have the payment ready and in place, done, so that we can fulfill that sacrifice. In addition to this, it is from the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Listen carefully. It is from the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. For the one who will be sacrificing the animal themselves to refrain from clipping their hair and clipping their nails. So refrain from trimming your hair or cutting your hair. Refrain from clipping your nails or trimming your nails from the beginning of Dhul Hijjah until the animal is sacrificed. Say that again. It is from the Sunnah of the Prophet for the one who will be offering the sacrifice and doing the sacrifice themselves to fulfill this sunnah by not clipping their nails and their hair for the entire 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Now a person says, but I want to look like a million dollars on the day of Eid. I want to, you know, come for Eid prayer in my nice clothing, trimmed, beautiful, nails are fine, hair is perfect, styled up, gelled, whatever. I want to look like a million dollars. You look like a million dollars and more to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by submitting to Him in this action. We live to please Allah. We don't live to please the people around us. So when we fulfill actions that are found in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu it is our submission to Allah. And there's no price that any human being can put on that. There are times when people will say, I wish I can fulfill this sunnah, but I can't. Because of whatever health reasons or whatever's going on in their lives, they can't fulfill that sunnah. Some people will say, I wish that I can fast a day of Ramadan, which is not even a sunnah, it's a compulsory act. But because of certain health issues, maybe they have stomach ulcers, maybe they have some medical condition, they can't even fulfill a fard, something that is compulsory. There's no price that we can put on that. And so my brothers and sisters, we need to step away from just saying, oh, this deen and take everything easy. Sacrifice a little bit. Put in the effort. Let the mustache grow. Let the nails grow. Let, uh, we look scruffy, no problem. We look scruffy for the sake of Allah. He appreciates our submission. Just like during the month of Ramadan, when our breath smells because we're fasting, but to Allah it is sweeter than the sweetest scent of musk. And so my brothers and sisters, plan for these 10 days and ask Al-Kafir to be the one who looks after what we plan to do. For when we have intention to please Him, He will follow through with the rewards. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us goodness and ease and to make it easy for us to fulfill his deen. Ameen. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. Wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma gfir lana wa rahamna wa rzukna wa afina. Allahumma taqabal minna a'malana salihan ya arham al-rahimin. Allahumma a'izz al-islam wa al-muslimin. Allahumma a'izz al-islam wa al-muslimin. Ya Allah, increase us in knowledge. Ya Allah, please make it easy for us to come closer to you in the knowledge of this deen that we find within the Qur'an and the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Allah, please make it easy for us to submit to you in the ways that you love. Ya Allah, please make it easy for us to put our own nafs aside and to fulfill what it is, what is that you love from us. Ya Allah, please make it easy for all those that are suffering and struggling and going through hardship and difficulty in different regions of the world or here within our own town. Ya Allah, please remove the hardship from upon them and make it a means of forgiveness and attainment of the highest level of paradise al firdaus al-a'la. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. Inna Allah ya'amru bil-adli wal-ihsani wa ita'i bil-qurba wa yanha anil fahshati wal munkari wal-baghi ya'adhukum la'allakum tadakkaroon wa dhkuru Allahi afkurkum wa dhu'u yastajib lakum wa la dhikru Allahi akbar wa Allah ya'amu ma tasna'umun wa fi muslim. Allah, 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 Allah,